Good evening, good evening. Hello everyone. I hope everybody is fine today. Been a bit of a wet one down here in the southwest. I always seem to be doing a weather report when <laughs> whenever I jump online. So let me just uh, get myself ready. We seem to have two in the chat, which looks good. Um, if you can hear me fine, give me a hey, give me a ho. Um, and so that we know that we are live. And that everyone can hear me fine. So, um, bit of an update, really. I'm just looking over my shoulder because I need to look at the Airfix website because I want to talk about a tweet that happened today, um, or a tweet that I saw that was um, put out a couple of days ago by Airfix. It got me all a little bit excited, and then I found out that um, it wasn't to be. So. Yeah, it was a little bit of a disappointment that, but hopefully the website the website is running really really slow. So I've tried to get on there to actually find the page for the uh, the Spitfire um, and uh, just discuss a little bit of my thoughts on the matter. So let's say no one's mentioned anything in the chat yet, so you must be all getting excited and everything to watch me build again. Um, a bit of a recap from last night. I have been working on this matchbox um hellcat uh, from 1973 and if you just join the chat tonight thank you very much for joining welcome along we're a small bunch of people here um let's move these out of the way because uh they're no good so um the story is really this i have this um hellcat yeah i bought it off ebay it was it was pennies it was like four or five quid or something and the chap said in the description that it doesn't come with original decals and um he's going to send me ones that will do the trick so he sent me these ones here and basically i'm going to be doing the um 1839 squadron so open up the box got out the sprues and we looked at the instructions and of course the instructions are just just one long page with few bits there to look at and um, there's no cockpit in this really is you've got a pilot and a seat um, there's no real engine to build it's just a three piece with a prop on the end um, put them together there a little wheel on the back and um, I put the fuselage on I'm not gonna put the canopy on yet I want to do that last I put the fins on last night so tonight we're going to try and get the wings on and to get it ready prepped for giving it um a paint job um hi uh james welcome to the chat um well all those who breathe oxygen are alive I'm not sure about anyone else <laughs> very good james i like that the matchbox hellcat is the same age as me yeah i am 47 then sir uh, congratulations on that <laughs> 47 yeah you remember john lennon so and probably elvis so yeah so tonight i'm going to just put the wings on and uh and glue that all together um, I did a little bit of work on it today while I had a little bit a little bit of time. Um, obviously, as you know, I'm going to be uh, brush painting this as you would back in the 70s. I'm trying not to use filler, even though that the plastic putty came today. Uh, what do I do with that? Here it is. Um, this stuff is amazing. Um, you know, back in the day, you know, I was an absolute my favourite really. Um, if I get some here, was this stuff. I used to use this all the time. Um, you know, it's very good for me, it was, but there's a lot of cleanup involved, you know, and it takes a long time for it to dry. But this perfect plastic putty is brilliant. So, hopefully, now this is here, as I was saying before, the reason I've stopped on this one is that I gave it um, a prime, this little eggplant that I'm in the process of doing. And as you look underneath, there was a you see there's some slight um panel you know there's a bit of a gap in the panel in there and there's a little bit under here um and i want to fill that in with perfect plastic pipe before i give it another coat rub it down of obviously give it another coat and um and then get it ready for spraying the the final coat before i put the decals on there's not much there's not much um to do on this kit really it's a very small kit but it's just a bit of fun isn't it it's just a bit of fun and uh, I've got to pick which decals I use. So that's come today, which is good. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. eBay. So as I was saying, I'm trying not to um, use any 
any filler on this um, so if there is a line that's left it's unfortunate but what I've done is, is I've, I've actually smoothed this down and last night I was showing you um, a really good tool which is it here have I got it here or is it on my bench uh, I was using the flexi file to go around the um, edge of the canopy and I don't know what I've done with the flexi file have I put it away I thought I had it here somewhere anyway so I was using the flexi file to get it nice and clean no, it's, there it is look at me right in front of my face there so I was using the flexi file I explained what the use was and it was just a way that you can you kind of pinch it together and it will give you a bend and you can go around and tidy up the seam and then when I went, I went over and got the um, the uh, the buffer I went over it and I buffed it so it shined but when I put my finger over it I can't feel a ridge there now that ridge is gone there's a bit of a ridge there but that's basically it the dog's barking I apologize so yeah that's where we're at with this so we're going to put the wings on tonight uh, so that should be a nice little 20 minute job so as I say each part of the show that I do we do have a bit of building James Mal just writes, I do remember Elvis and the day he died. God, I'm ancient. <laughs> I'm a 79 baby. I was born January 79. I don't remember much. I do remember, The only thing I really remember, I think I was about five years old in uh, the Falklands War. And then, um, then also, um, unfortunately, uh, which was one of my amazing fears of flying um, for many a year, was that uh, my first recollection of news, really real news, was the Lockerbie disaster and I think that was where I got my original fear of flying from but that's now been dealt with and I've flown all over the place now so I'm feeling a little bit better over that so by and by with that so we'll get the um, the instructions out and I know exactly what they need this is um, quite an interesting way of building a wing um, we'll just open up the instructions again because it's in three pieces um, so yeah so basically you've got the the wing comes in um three sections you've got one two three four and you think oh yeah just for no you've got the bits here for where the undercarriage is so you know where the gearing goes so we'll have to cut them out um so i'll get me little snips out i've got the um i've got the dave coley ones tonight i'm using them instead of the i've got the tamaria ones here as you can see but i thought i used the dave ones tonight Give us a little try again. I do like them, by the way, and they're half the price of the Tamiya ones. So, uh, highly recommended from me. They do clip quite nicely, so we'll get the 16 out. Around we go, nice and tight. I did do a review on the sprue cutters, so if you want, look for the video, The Ultimate Guide to Sprue Cutters, where I go through a complete range of sprue cutters that I've bought. I've used the hum. I've got the humble ones. I've got the more expensive um, model. What's it called? Um, Warcraft ones. Um, what's that company called again? Um, yeah. Uh, I can't remember the called now. You know the war war gaming. Like, I can't remember what it's called now. Totally forgotten now. Just shows you. But the, the Citadel ones. All right. There you go. So we'll just cut these out. I think that's the right side. I haven't really looked at the numbers. I know I need all of these. So just be careful with that because you've got the little um, little guns at the front there. So hopefully, if that's correct, look at that. Do a dry fit test. There you go. It needs a little bit of clean up, which I'll do now. So there's that bit, and then I need to see, uh, will it be that side? So if I've got them two bits there together, perfect. That's there, and then I need, oof, let's do that bit there. So I need that bit there. Number 18. My fear of flying came from building aircraft. Did you just build aircraft? Did you? Fair play, my friend. Fair play. It's not all that bad on a plane, is it? They've got so much redundancy, haven't they? Haven't they got a lot of redundancy? Let's 
Um, I was quite fortunate to be able to go to Exeter many, many moons ago to see the Flyby-8 workshop and I was quite impressed with it all actually. I thought it was really, really, it was a really good tour it was, really worth it. Such a shame that they've now gone, such a shame. Just looking at the clean up here, there's not a lot that needs doing so I'll get me, me knife out. Just shouldn't be doing that really but I'll give it a clean. And um, just there's a little nick there which I need to get rid of. It's now gone. Uh, that looks clean inside there. That looks clean. A little bit of a nub there, which I'll just gently grate away. Just give that a quick buff. Whoops. Perfect. Down the edge there's a slight little one there. That's in gone. I think that's pretty well cleaned up. Was the first one cleaned up? You're working in the garden today, done bits and pieces. Who's in the chat? Propeller aircraft, Harrier and Hawks. Lovely, lovely. Uh, just need a little bit. There we go. Any questions at all? Put them in the chat. Always, always willing to answer questions. And if I don't know the answer, hopefully somebody in the chat will. I spoke to Baggies. Uh, on email today just organizing software see what he's got he hasn't responded yet but hopefully he will to do a live like two hour live session of a build of a plane and see how far we get in two hours of building a plane um, I think he's on about doing the Hawker Demon which um, I'm a, you know I haven't done a biplane for so long now a little bit nervous about doing a biplane all that rigging eh friggin rigging that's it cool cool so that's all pretty much cleaned up. I'm not that happy with that. Just them two bits there. That bit looks pretty good. We've got a bit of a nub there. And then what we'll do is we'll glue this together and give it a dry fit and see what happens. Come on. There you go. He's gone now. That one there. Along the edge. Just pull that back so that's in. He's now gone. That edge there. These are double sided, so you've got like a bit of a coarser grit there and a fine grit just to finish it, give it a polish sort of thing. I think that's almost done. So that sticks in there like so. And then this one fits on top there. It's not looking too bad, that's clicked in. That's okay. I'm quite happy with it. Oh, it's just slipped again. So if I put that one in first, if we glue that one in first, so what I'm going to do is there's a little lip there. So we do the old bog standard on the lip. So just there. Go along here. Down the edge. There we go. And then here. Push them together, hopefully you'll stick. Hold in there slightly, there's a bit of a distance, a bit, little bit of movement there, which I need to have a look at. Then we'll go over here and just go through and let the, let the cement go down through the gap. Cool, there's that side. And then we have here, a little bit just to get the liquid in the gap perfect and then let me just do a little bit along this edge here that's actually pretty good to be honest I think I don't think that's going anywhere if I put a, a clamp on that 
around that bump. I don't think we're going to have any issues with that at all. Uh, so that's that bit done. So it's got little pin marks there. You got a pin there, so it should fit on the pin, like so. So that's on the pin. Press that in close. I think we're pretty much there on that. So again, we just go around that pin, paint the cement on the side bits. Whoops, bit too far there. That clamps in. And I think this side is now done. And I might just move that to there. Clamp it in. I think that's pretty much there, gentlemen, ladies. That's going to go anywhere. In through there. Slight little gap there. But if I move that up to there, that work. Not too bad, is it? And this has to go in there. Perfect. Right, so there's the first wing done. And then we do the same with the second wing. Leave that to dry. Come in here, go one, two, three, in there, four. Grab the knife. Out there, that little nudge there, pretty much flat, and then oh, it's a bit done, and I think we're done there's a little nub there that's the first bit done and then we'll get to this part of the wing here so, right to be fair I, I don't you know I always clean my models with alcohol after I put them together and sometimes you can feel the release but there is no release I don't I can't feel any release on this you know you get sometimes you get a little thing but no is that the same on the other wing then? Underneath, underside. Hmm, there's just a little tiny hole there. I don't know what that's because of. A little look at that. Little look at that. I may have to get the filler out. I don't want to. I want to, actually. I'm going to try and build this kit as close to uh, somebody who did this in the 1970s as possible. I know I'm using Tamiya cement on this, but yeah, I didn't want to use any filler. Just wanted to make sure it's natural as possible. So all you would do is build it, then paint it. Evening, David. How are you? Nice to join me. I suppose there's nothing good on the telly tonight, then. The missus hasn't got you watching any, you know, um, how, you know, was it called Bargain Hunt or anything like that on the telly? Or um, Changing Rooms. Remember Changing Rooms or DIY SOS. It's a problem with telly these days, isn't it? Simon Carroll, he put the turd into Saturday night. <laughs> so that's pretty much cleaned up now. So we'll put that together. Make sure everything's all nice and together. Yeah, so that hole's a bit annoying. I don't know what that hole is, but maybe there's something. Maybe it's like an added extra. I'll have a look in a minute. Not that we all, not that we're all, uh, we're all amateurs here, aren't we? Well, I am. So we've got that, and then we need the final piece, for the other side of the wing. Is that website loaded yet? So the Airfix website is very slow. 
in there. So that's that flat screw. We just give it a bit of a clean up. I was saying last night on the live chat that um, when I was doing started building this channel, people were saying, why don't you show a complete build? And I was explaining um, what an arse it is to actually film, there's a little nub there, to actually film yourself building a model in it. You know, you can have like up to eight weeks, um, eight weeks of, of filming because you've taken eight weeks. Because if you're like me, obviously I have a, three or four models on the go all the time. Um, and um i try to get because you know i always find um airbrushing a real faff and so i try to airbrush everything in one go so you've got all these hours of footage that you've got to then save and then edit and i thought it'd be easier just to live stream a build that's the plan um so yeah that's why i've been doing it so again it fits lovely in there nicely nicely done so using that edge we'll go here first right in the corner with a little lip there and then along the edge here along the side and hopefully that will then stick together nicely boom and then we'll go along the edge here up the side Perfect. Go down here on the front edge. Get the glue the gaps. Turn them around. Just uh, go back here again. Whoops. Perfect. I think that's pretty much clamped now. So I'll take that clamp off and put that clamp in there, like so. This one here should fit. There's the little nub on the nub there. And it goes in position. And oh that's that's even that's a, yeah, it's a little bit better that fit to be honest. So what I'm gonna do is is just uh, take that off. Bit of glue around the edge here around the nub. Along there, down there. them in and then around the edge around here and I would say that this wing is now glued I'm gonna do that one I think he's pretty much there do you know what I'm just I just seen something that I'm not happy with not quite glued there is it what a shame let's get some more glue in there then quick let's get all the pinching together like so pinched and I think I might need a little bit of um, Tamiya on there masking tape and I'll just hold him there so David says another bloody home makeover show with people who have more money than sense and can't make up their minds. <laughs> I've got the um, the Airfix mug. Can you see that? If I tilt it, the old Airfix mug tonight. Decaf coffee, obviously, because I'll never sleep else. And that is actually glued in now. This is where you find you got oh, there's a little nub there. What's that little nub doing there? So he's gluing in fine. We'll leave that one there just to just to give a little bit more clean. Then we'll attach him to this model. You hear how tinny it is? <laughs> right, so put that back there, put them there. That's really it with the wings. That's then it'll be prepped then. And then what I'll do is I might, if the paint comes tomorrow night, tomorrow, because I need a sky. I didn't have a sky, you see. I've, I have got a sky, but I didn't want to use Tammy. I wanted to use Humbro. So um, the Humbro is 
due hopefully tomorrow. Um, the order went in last night and it only take two days to get to me. Um, it's a big order as well, so hopefully they'll turn up. If they don't, we'll uh, think of something else. I might just give it a, an, a, a prime coat. Um, but yeah, basically that's it. Put the wings on, and then we're going to leave the um, we're going to leave the tanks, and we're going to leave the uh, gear in till very last. But I'll still paint it, obviously. That's that is the the main thing. That is, I'm pretty sure that's glued now. So obviously. In the wing it goes so we dry fit it in it doesn't look too bad does it there's no real gap there is there um so that that's in it's very loose though it's not tight at all i'm not happy with that there so let me just give that a bit of a rub down first wrong side Well done, and then that little edge there. Then we'll fit that back in there, and I think that's pretty well. That's pretty good. So, yeah. So out with the glue again. Let's get this wing on. James, I nearly built the Matchbot Hellcat a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but the canopy went missing. My parents hated me building my model kit. <laughs> That's a shame, isn't it? I um, I just I just think it's good to build vintage model kits. But then again, in all fairness, I bet this is the Revel kit. I bet this is the Revel kit. So fit that in there. Give him a pinch and hold him there for a bit. Yeah, because I think mo most of Matchbox's uh, models went to Revel, didn't they? Whoops, that didn't quite stick, did it? Come on. Hmm. Not too happy with this fit. Got a little bit of movement there. Uh, just hold him there in position. It's not sticking, is he? Get the big guns out. Oh, come on. Right, let's try again. He goes. I just hold him. <sighs> held in position. David says, what was your final thought on the D-Day set from Airfix? You getting it? Um, I'm going to, I am, right, I've got an issue. I want to talk about it tonight, actually, on, and later on in the chat. I've got a mega issue with Airfix and their pre-ordering. Because I pre-order, whenever it comes, I pre-order. I pre-ordered the Vulcan. And on the last four occasions of when the pre-order came out, it comes back with a message saying to me, we're very sorry, but your credit card can't be taken at the moment. Or your debit, we can't take payment. So what I've got to do is, is find the model online. And then normally, because they've got the pre-order doesn't mean jack really. Um, it comes back and I can just order it, show off the website and it, and it goes out within a couple of days. Now... I was thinking that if they brought out that kit as it is, the two kits, because it's the D-Day set from, which is the, yeah, it's, you've got the American, and you've got the British, haven't you? That's right, yeah. So, um, you've got the air and you've got the C, is that right? So, what I might do is just buy the kit separate, at twenty because I've got the paints and everything, um, and I, you know, it's like the, the, the starter set, you know, 
I've got the, the, the thing. I don't need that. And that's what I mean. It, it, you know, if you're going to do it, you just want to give them everything. You know, give them, give them the, the tools. Give them the de deco fix. Give them the gloss finish. Not get them so far and forget about them. But yeah, I probably will buy it. <laughs> I probably will pre-order it. And then um, do a review. And then put it in my stash until I can be bothered to, to build it. So this is all pretty much glued. Again, we'll get the... Um, use this stuff instead. That's that one. And do a bit on this edge. Straight down that edge. Lift him up. And hopefully he can go in. I didn't dry fit this one, did I? Bugger. It's alright. Let's see how it looks. It's not looking too bad, to be honest. Whoops. Just, uh, gotta make sure he's straight. He's a little bit up that one side, isn't he? So... Hold him in position. History and Scale was said he's never actually bought something direct from Airfix. Well, I can assure you, fella, that it's not a bad experience. Um, when I did the unboxing for the Tiger Moth, you'll see exactly how it comes. It comes in a pretty good box, well packaged. The only beef I've got is that they charge you four ninety five, I think it is, for postage. I'm sure, it's, it's quite an expensive postage. We'll have a look in a minute. Um, yeah, I think they charge the earth for postage, but they do use DPD, um, which I can honestly say out of all the delivery companies that I know of, I think DPD is absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm just looking at that. Does does that wing look right to you? Because I'm going to look down straight. I think it is all right, actually. I think that's pretty much bang on. What do you think if I put it up right there? That look pretty bang on to you. I think that's pretty much there. So what I'll do is, is I will try to think of the best way of. I don't want to use tape. I think that's pretty much there. That's gluing away nicely. So if I can I do that? Put that down flat. No, he's breaking there, isn't he? Got to hold it. Just hold it for a bit. Look at that. There's never a better um, pair of clamps than your hands. The problem is you've only got two of them. <laughs> Honestly, if you've got a third hand now, do you know what I mean? You could do so much, you know. Um yeah, it's it's alright buying from FX, but like I said, it is a bit of a nightmare for pre-ordering because you end up just buying it anyway straight from the site, or you have to ring up. Now, when I rang up today, I was in, I was in, um, I was position six in the queue, and I was there for a good fifteen minutes, and then I was, then they answered. So, um, but yeah, it's. Um, But yeah, it's, 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 you know, but the problem is that, you know, it's like I said, you know, and I, I'm not going to diss this. I just, has anyone here watched the James Mays model, is it, um, Trouble in Mod, Model Britain, it was called? I've actually got a copy and I've kept it on there. And, um, basically Hornby hadn't released any decent trains or something for years because Simon Cola had left. And, um, Simon Cola, it's, it's quite, it, it plays out beautifully. It's proper neighbours eastenders dun 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 dun, dun sort of um script in but the um at the end of the day basically he Simon Cola saw that they were building these two sets of trains from one company and there's another set of trains from another company and he said we have to get ours out first and so he did and the guy who was building his train said he did it out of spite and um I think it was Rails of Sheffield um were bringing out a train 
And Simon Kohler turned around and basically said, you know, he wasn't that impressed with this other chap saying that, well, you're you're going onto our patch, you know, you're building bloody trains, bar bar bar. And I just thought that was absolute crap because the model kit, the model shops are absolutely struggling because Airfix sell online, just as the rest of them, they cut out the middleman, you know? So, you know, him them saying, oh, they're stepping into our space because they're now building trains. Well, these model shops are saying, well, you've been stepping in our space for effing ages. You know, you sell online, you've got your own shop in Margate, you know, but you're selling online. So, you know, obviously, when I want an Airfix kit, I'm not going to, a brand new one, you know, pre-release, I'm not going to go down to um, my local model shop who's no longer there um, and get it from them because I can get it within two days from Airfix. So, right, yeah, um, going back to this chat, sorry, I've never actually, uh, sorry, uh, David says, I do love the Typhoon plane from World War II, which is part of that kit. Such a great looking plane. It is a good looking plane. Um, History of Scale says, I was about to say the postage, yet the postage is quite high. Um, History of Scale, I buy my stuff from a hobby shop. It's usually cheaper postage and cheaper kits. Yep, that is quite true. But when you are, when you see that it's a pre-release and it's a brand new tool, you're not going to wait around for your model shop to get it when you can buy it direct from Airfix. And that's what Simon Kohler was saying. They have stepped on the, sh the toes of the hobby shops for years, you know. And so when the hobby shop bites back and they start developing their own models, and it does it, it's not cheap. I think the Hellcat was a hundred thousand. Was it the well? Is it the the one twenty four scale Hellcat? I think if I'm right, the guy said on that show it's called um, um, James May's Trouble in Model Britain. If you want to see it, I do have it um, on um, a link. Um, it's no longer on the BBC Four website or is it BBC Two website anymore. Um, if you want it, uh, PM me and I'll send you a link to it because it is out there. Um, I'm not going to say where it is, you know, obviously because it is copyrighted. But somebody has put it on a on a on a forum, and you can click this forum, and it's and you can go and watch it there. And before people ask why am I doing this, is that I actually twit, I actually messaged BBC, and I messaged uh, James May on Twitter saying. This was a brilliant little two-episode series I'd like to buy on DVD, and no one came back to me. So the only way to do it was to actually find it on, online. I would have easily paid seven ninety nine to download that. It was a brilliant little show. It really was interesting. And and I thought, you know, that they were saying that they were stepping on their toes. And I think that was a really injustice. I thought it was a real, real kick in the teeth, really. Really sad. Um... Simon Kohler should have known better, but it, it clearly played out that he knew these two trains. I can't remember what the train was now. David would know what was the train that rails because he put out saying if you want corned beef, you would buy the Hornby brand train, and if it, <laughs> but if you wanted steak, you buy the rails of Sheffield <laughs> train. <laughs> but well, you know the other guy from the other shop the day before. He said he was doing that out of spite. And he probably went for, for cola. It was it was beautiful television. It really was beautiful television. But I think that's pretty much stuck there now. So that is really almost ready to be painted. I'll I will um I'll just give this a clean up down here when it's fully dried. I'll give it a day to dry. Um yeah. And uh and we'll, we'll I might just No, I'm gonna leave that. There is a slight gap there. There's a little bit of overspill there, but I will sand that down and then it will be ready for painting. That was one thing I was going to just check, make sure that wheel is able to come down still. Yeah, that wheel is still coming up and down. So hopefully, I'll, if I decide to put the um, the wheels on, uh, uh, keep them down, I will glue that in that position there. But if I don't, I can push it back in out of the way. Good idea for Matchbox. Actually, you've got two op options there. You can either have the wheel up or the wheel down. And there's a like a little, um, two little nubs in a little pinhole. And it means like, it's brilliant. It is good. Terrier. Well done, the Terrier. Yeah, you're right there, David. The model shop was only doing this because Hornby were dying on their ass before the, this bloke came back. And he was right. And they were. You know, they were dying on their ass. They, they released nothing decent for years. The model shops are waiting and waiting and waiting. In the end, they decided to bring their own Terrier out. And there was another train as well, and he didn't like it. And so he went and got it 
developed within nine months is trained the terrier that's what it was yeah and if you want a corned beef terrier you get it from hornby if you want <laughs> if you want um a, a, a prime steak when you get it from rails i just want to quickly check on which i just got that let me just quickly check on the website so i want to see whether um the website is running really slow so i'm hoping this will go and load up that page so I want to talk about Hornby, but before I nip over to the computer, I just want to say, I, whenever I do a review of a product, I always like to in um, sh know, let, let the company that I've met, done a review about know that I've done this review. So I did this review yesterday, I put it online, of the EBMA aircraft paint stand, and I and the guy, I'll tell you what, I hope you like the video, it's a little review, shows them how I built it, and uh, what the sort of uses it was and i did put in the comment i said wouldn't it be better if it was like a cross section so you had the plane um so you had balance from four points instead of just the three points okay he came back to me brilliant he said love the love the review thank you so much for doing it could i share it on forums so people can see what they're buying and see it being built i said absolutely fine and he said the reason he said he hasn't so he said he hasn't found a way of um storing the um extra pieces but at the moment all i'm doing is just put them in in here um and just storing them so all the wings together all the fuselages together but he did say he liked the idea of the foam and says well it's a game changer for me anyway having this foam buy this foam because if you put this down anywhere on a surface what it does is it will wait, wait, if i just change the light there you go it does make it a lot nicer it, it gives a bit of grip to the to the um to the uh, model that you're painting basically it's, it's a good stuff and he said like the idea the reason it's not a cross so you haven't got like a cross section so you haven't got this extended out here to so you've got the plane there and you've got the wings this side he said was that you can't fit it properly because you look you, you'll never get the right height for these so if you've got it in three places at least you've got three points of contact if you have the fourth one it's very hard to get it get these the right you have to have loads of these to make them fit if you know what i mean so i understand what he was saying he um he didn't you know and i, I took him on board and that's so that's fair enough yet but i did thought maybe if there was a point a, a point of access here where you could have the fuselage piece here that's a wing piece anyway you understand what i'm saying though don't you that it was a, it's more of like a crucifix cross section so you could have the 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 cockpit rest in here the back of the fuselage rest in here and the wings here and then it would give you four points of contact at the moment you've only got three and he did and it was quite a good point because if you do as i said if you do have a plane and you put it there and you put it there uh which one do i need that one there that's fuselage in it so there let me just see if i can do it with this one where's um use that one so say it's like this like so and then if you've got one because like sometimes you get the bigger planes and they, they stick out here so you would have another piece under here but he said that this this one here will be difficult to measure because you need loads of the fuselage bits to make it work but it is quite sturdy i'm quite happy with that it's uh, it's a good tool and he said thank you for doing the review and he's going to share it amongst his people on forums i believe so let's just put these away in here so um David Rose Coffee, like crucifix. Yes, it's just like a crucifix, yeah, like a cross. Um, history and scale, interesting. Didn't know about the model shops making their own trains and stuff. Yes, uh, Rails have been doing it for a while. Um, another company, is it Pico, which are down near me, you know, about 40 miles away in a place called Seaton? Um, they, um, they do their own line, you know, with their own. I think they bought Lima, I think they bought Racial Plastic Models. There's a whole range of products under their umbrella sort of thing so um yeah but it's a really good program if you can find it anywhere watch it it's called james may's trouble in model britain it's two episodes and they even talk about the hellcat or when they when they produced it they talk about a bit about scale electrics but hornby um and also they talked about fx and um you know it's, it's a really fascinating thing but I've looked into buying and, and doing me a model model line just for a bit of a crack and it's just too dear. So anyway, what I want to do now is just leave this here. I'm going to move over to my Mac now and we're going to talk on there about 
the tweet that got me a little bit excited for no reason. Hopefully you can now hear me over here on the Mac. Is if is that correct? Can you all hear me? Just give me a give me a thumbs up on the chat just to make sure. Um, yeah, Hattons um, Hattons have made all sorts of different pieces, haven't they? Because they do. I think they've got the their own paint brand. They've got their own um, their own or decal sheets. They do them as well, don't they? So um, Hattons have. Uh, pretty much got a good market there um but they they they're, they're quite petty actually because there's a lot of us online sellers who uh, they won't they won't sell to um rails had an awesome shop well into stuff quality stuff and bought over one million of stuff from hornby that's why he was pissed off too yeah spent a million quid honestly hornby actually had the locals in development eight months or more before captain slow's program was released and they were in the marketplace nearly a year before rails and hattons had those is that right? Because the actual show didn't do that. They actually, they actually, um, they actually showed the guy absolutely so annoyed at Simon Simon saying that you you released this, and um, there's I know they didn't sell, but they they did have them in development, and it kind of took the edge off. It's a bit like Apple, <laughs> you know, um, releasing a phone, and then some part of the software gets out and is then released by Samsung sort of thing, you know, but, but as I said, the, the problem I had with it was Simon Kohler was bang out of order by using the excuse. Why are you developing trains? You know, you're moving into our space when in all honesty, Airfix, I've been moving into the hobby shop space for years since the internet started, you know, Airfix have their own shop and they cut out the middleman. It is simple. Anyway, I'm trying to get this um, website to work. It's this one here. And every time I try to click on it, it's saying gateway timeout. And it just won't load the um, the Airfix. So it's unfortunate. I've tried and I've tried and I can't get it to. But this was what got me was that the... Um, the Airfix um, put out a tweet saying, oops, yes, it is a mistake. This last post was meant for next Thursday, but you all see it gives you all the more time to rush out and buy both the m and shortbread and pre-order the Airfix Spitfire from your favourite stockist. Don't blame us for your waistlines. Now, I read that right and it totally blew me away because i thought they meant you could pre-order now right oh sorry let's go right when they said yes mate, the last post was meant for next thursday i thought they were going to start shipping out the plane next thursday um so i thought ah so that must mean that you can pre-order it now ready for release so they're going to release it thursday brilliant so here am i on the website and I thought, hang on a minute, um, maybe I need to ring up, because I've had the problems with the credit card, maybe I need to go and um, ring them up and just book it online, on, on the phone. So I rings the woman up and she goes, I don't know nothing, don't know what you're on about. And I said, well, I've got this link here saying that, um, you know, May the 1st, I know this is four days ago, but I thought that maybe you'd be, you know, on the, you can pre-order the, the, um, the plane for Thursday, you know, now, so I can get it for Thursday, you know, obviously. And she goes, no, she says, this isn't going to be released to autumn. And it just shows you how crap, or I'm, I'm not having a dig, I, I, I sound so bad, but the, 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 the social media on FX is crap. It really is. You write a comment, they never respond to anything you put on their Twitter feed. And, you know, and look at this. They've sent this picture up. It's not even the right way. It's a portrait, right? And it's not even funny. You know, have it the right way so that we can actually see. And all their advertisers, M&S, are bringing out an all-butter Scottish shortbread with a Spitfire on it. You know? 
and you just think, you know, what is what is the issue? But you know, when I think about you know this this five this five B, the the five um, the um the, the planes coming out the the five C. Do you think that you know Airfix have just have lost that little bit of mojo that all right, they've bought the Hellcat, which is good. They've now decided they're going to bring out the Vulcan, which is good because the tooling's terrible. But do you really think that they need another Spitfire when they've got the, they've got the five B already, haven't they? That's already you can buy that in the shop now, I think. But do they really need? I just think it's a waste of talent. The guy, obviously, who's developed this plane, it looks fantastic. Don't get me wrong. You know, I will be buying it, and I will be reviewing it, and I will be building it. But I just think he would have had better um, developing something else. You know, look at this. This is the other one that I'm really interested in, is the Canada Sabre. It just looks fantastic, doesn't it? Just going back to the chat now. Um, um, James Mower, it was all froth. Okay, about that. And David Ravenscroft writes, Rails were close to going to market in Hornby. Just beat them, I thought. And then um, Dave said, Airfix site was down earlier and is really, really slow now. Uh, History and scale, I had that issue as well. James Mower, Hornby had the Terry in development for about five years. Is that really correct, James? Because I didn't know that. I Because I assumed... So they didn't. That's why Rails... Because they even said in the show that they had upped the game. It's been nine months. So when Simon came back, he saw that the Terrier... Um, he, he needed to bring out another Terrier. And so within nine months from deciding when he's... And it's the way it was done on the show. So are you saying that the show was telling lies? That's what I'm asking. You know, I, you have to... You know, you got to, you know, I know it's media, but surely there was a bit more. And the way that Rails the way the guy was he wasn't that impressed he really wasn't he wasn't that impressed at all um history and scale i had more luck on instagram with them replying james mower m and shortbread is fantastic yeah but you know but anyway this um this canada does look the business this this is another one that i'm looking forward to to purchasing 32.99 no 32.99 um it's one to forty-eight scale. It's going to be skill level three, so you get your three flying hours with that, um, and that's apparently due out soon. But you know, if you look at the model, I I, I do think it, it's an, it's incredibly good. I wanted to bring up that five five C. I'm so annoyed at the website, but it has gone down. I'm sure it has. The site is very very slow. But look at the you know look at the build up there. Look at the way that I presume actually saw one section there, two hours stick together, push through. But it just looks brilliant, doesn't it? And the decals, well, that's subject to change, obviously. But it does look the look the part. Very, very nice. Still, no, is it still not loading? But yeah, I just thought the social media really does need a little bit of a little bit more finesse in what they do. It's disappointing. I was really excited. I thought, yeah, but um. I thought, yeah, I am going to buy it, though. But then again, I suppose this is the problem, you see. They bring out Spitfires because we always seem to go back to building a Spitfire, doesn't it? <laughs> um, David just writes, if Hornby had it in development for five years, I'm sure Rails would have found out or heard a rumour. I think you're right there, David. I, I don't think it's all cut mustard there. Um, but my, as I said, the original point of it was, was that for Simon to slap that back to us as a viewer... To say, well, you've been in our space for years, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, when obviously they've been selling online and it's easier sometimes to buy the um, the kits online from directly from manufacturer than it is to get them from your local, your local shop. And also, I think Airfix do have wholesalers as well. So you, could, you know, some of the local shops can't just buy direct from Airfix. I, d I don't know how the system works, but... Um, it would be interesting um, to see how sellers get on after this is all sorted. Um, right, so yes, Simon Cowler and Hornby had in development before he left Hornby and their troubles caused by a Chinese manufacturer. Yeah, I just wonder whether if Airfix really did think hard why they don't bring back the China, can bring it all back from China and do it back in this country or even 
go to Russia and do it because I think the some of the Russian kits are coming out. Look at you know all the all the what I call the Eastern Bloc of Europe are fantastic. You know, look at mini art. You know, mini art stuff is absolutely amazing. It's really good. I've got an SU eighty five um, early production and one thirty five scale on my shelf. And, you know, I would love to have, um, you know, when I've got, there's a sort of project where I was just going to sit down, have a whole weekend and just blitz that tank. You know, it's it's a lovely, lovely tank. Um, uh, mini art. Um, mini art. What was it again? SU-85. SU-85. Have a look. Um, see if this one loads in. Don't tell me that that website's down as well. <laughs> um, it's a shame it's impossible to make them in Britain anymore because it's um, it's it's too expensive. I don't buy that. I really don't because a lot of model kits are still built in this country. Isn't racial plastic models still built in this country? Isn't Pico? models still built here let me know i'm pretty sure they're still made in this country i haven't seen this uh, sorry i'm just looking at this um history is going it's shame it's impossible to make them in britain anymore because it's very expensive here i uh, yeah no i i don't buy that i think once you've got the machinery in and you've got the tool in i don't think labor rate i know you've got a bit a larger labor rate but i don't think it's that bad as what they make out to be um, maybe all this virus thing, maybe the future is local manufacturing. I really do believe so. I think we need to get down that route. Um, James Mao, have you seen the Zvezda 148 scale hind? I haven't. I will do. Um, History of Scale says to manufacture that is. Yeah, it is. As I said, I'm sure there are plastic kit manufacturers in this country. Um, I know there is. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm sure you know the train side of it. I don't think you need to always go to China to get stuff manufactured, you know. Well, put it like this. I used to, when I was living up in the north, I worked for a factory that produced models, um, uh, produced no, um, plastic car parts for cars. And the factory was called Sankai Gozai, right? And they produce all the plastic interior and exterior part for Toyota, Mitsubishi, um, who else? Honda, um, Suzuki. And they manufactured all them there, you know. And I cannot believe that if, if, the, if, the, if the Japanese are coming over to this country to, to build the parts, then I don't understand why they need to be manufactured elsewhere. Just my thought on the matter anyway. Hi, Smoz101. How are you, sir? Uh, I've just won an FX Jaguar XJS in 143. Oh, 143 scale. I was going to say, if you've won an FX Jaguar XJS, how did you win that? How did you win that? Um, History scale. I think they're still making Meccano here. Are they? I thought it was in France. They made Meccano. Um, Prove me wrong. I thought, because um, it was in Liverpool, wasn't it? There was a great article. Um, I think it's in one of my news reports. There's a great article about when um, the factory shut for Meccano. It was phenomenal. It was a really good article as well. Um, anyway, so it's nine o'clock. You've had an hour of me. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, obviously, to do more live streaming. And hopefully the paint will be here. And I'll continue on with building that or painting the uh, Matchbox um um, Grumman's uh, Hellcat, the F6, F3. Um, if not, what I'll do is I'll get the perf I'll get the plastic putty in the um, the egg plane, and I'll get that all sprayed up, and we'll hopefully get the decals on that for tomorrow night. Everything else is all mustard. I can't think of anything else really. I need to catch up with. But I hope you are enjoying these live streams. Um, if you're not. Or you think there could be better live stream ways or things I can do on a live stream? Let me know. I'm I'm an amateur at this. I'm a I'm a young lad, <laughs> or a forty year old, <laughs> forty year old lad who um, likes the technology and found some software that hopefully and gives some pleasure to someone while I'm doing models. But if there's anything um, anything else um, I can you know do better, let me know. 
hopefully um, baggies and there's a model minutes and I've spoken to a few other people about doing a, a live stream together um, if you would like to do that then please contact me the, my, my, my email is in YouTube in, in the about page and if you want to come on and you'd love to put your face on camera you can just have a webcam down on your workbench as long as you've got a microphone and we'll just build and talk and that's that was the idea of these live streams and we can all have a bit of fun and build just quickly smalls right i won it on ebay i've been a big fan of them and it's a hella kit but airfix did a boxing of it rareish oh fair play to you mate fair play anyway that's it tonight i will speak to you tomorrow thank you for watching and if you could like the video click like if um and uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow at 8pm UK time. Have a good one and cheers.